The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. Water polo from Gremlin Graphics. The only sport where you can be a champion and still smell like chlorine. It's often described as a submerged version of basketball. But let's be real. If basketball had players bobbing around like apples in a punch bowl, it would definitely have a different vibe. Instead of slam dunks, we have dunk dunks. It's like a party in the deep end. And the best part, no post-game showers required. It's actually always impressed me at the Olympics this sport. I honestly didn't even realise that participants weren't allowed to put their feet on the ground, so it must be a very tiring event. Fair play to them. In spite of its mundane appeal, however, Gremlin has opted to simulate this aquatic sport in their game aptly titled Water Polo. The primary similarity between the game and the sport is a shared lack of excitement, raising questions about its potential to captivate audiences. A game that perfectly mirrors the thrilling experience of watching water slowly evaporate. The rules are simple. You just throw a ball into the opponent's net while trying not to look like a flailing fish out of water. It's a strategic dance. Think synchronised swimming, but with less grace and more flailing. You can play solo against the computer, or invite a friend over to share the joy of mild aquatic chaos. And if you're feeling ambitious, there's a championship mode, where four teams compete, which sounds like the perfect way to ruin a friendship. Matches last five minutes each quarter, giving you just enough time to realise you're in the wrong pool. You control only one player, identifiable by their ever-changing shower cap colour, because what's more intimidating than a bright pink swim cap? As you navigate the water, you can move in eight directions, which is impressive until you remember you're still just trying to pass a ball. This mechanic fosters a sense of immediacy, as you must remain aware of your positioning and the movements of your opponents. Direction, power and ball trajectory are managed through joystick input, although this system is not as refined as that found in other sports simulations. You can execute a variety of shots, from fast and low to short and high, incorporating spin for added finesse. Upon gaining possession, you raise the ball above your head. Pressing the fire button prompts you to wave it, signalling readiness for a pass or shot. By holding the fire button and directing the joystick, you can execute shots of varying speed and height, as well as apply spin to the ball for unpredictable plays. You must make a shot within 35 seconds, and failing to do so results in a turnover. Additionally, there are strict rules governing fouls where you can only retrieve the ball from the front, and attempting to grab it from behind results in a foul. Accumulating three fouls leads to a penalty of 90 seconds in the sin bin, or until the next goal is scored. It's a bit like being sent to the sidelines in ice hockey, but where all the ice has thawed out. Unlike other sports, disputing referee decisions is futile, especially given the referee's position poolside, conveying a sense of authority that you cannot challenge. I am a cunt, and you will respect my daughter. While the gameplay may not be exhilarating, the animation and graphics stand out as notable strengths. You consistently bob in the water, creating realistic ripples, and your swimming movements are impressively fluid. The ball also behaves well, bouncing and skidding across the water's surface during low shots, which adds a layer of realism to the experience. The scrolling is smooth, showcasing about two-thirds of the pool, complete with a referee pacing alongside the action. This attention to detail in the graphics contributes to an immersive atmosphere, even if the game itself may lack depth. Unfortunately, the sound design leaves much to be desired. Aside from a reasonable title tune, the audio primarily consists of a repetitive water sound that resembles a constantly flushing toilet. Punctuated by the occasional jarring whistle from the referee. This lack of auditory variety can detract from the overall experience, making it feel somewhat monotonous. The constant whoosh of water and the occasional whistle make you feel like you're stuck in an endless public restroom. 
In summary, while Water Polo boasts commendable graphics and animation, it ultimately lacks the engagement necessary to make it a standout title. The joystick controls do not provide a strong sense of mastery, and progression in skill feels limited, leading to a sense of frustration. The two-player mode undoubtedly offers the most enjoyment, fostering friendly competition and social interaction. In contrast, solo play may leave you feeling uninspired and longing for a more dynamic gaming experience. For those interested in a light-hearted sports simulation, Water Polo may provide a brief diversion, but it falls short of delivering a truly compelling gaming experience. Thanks for watching guys! Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and be sure to let us know what you thought of Water Polo in the comment section. Which was your favourite Commodore 64 sports game? Maybe it's already on the playlist for sports games on the channel. If not, then I'm sure it will be someday. So be sure to subscribe and follow me on this epic journey down memory lane. Thanks again for your continued support, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, bye for now. A massive thank you to the following Patreons. Your continued support goes a long way to ensure we continue on this epic journey down memory lane. And also those who have joined the YouTube membership. Stay retro.